In 2014, Blackmagic Design introduced the original Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera. Aiming to compete against companies like Sony, Canon, Nikon, and Panasonic, they provided all of the features of high-end professional cinema cameras for 90% less. Now, the original pocket cinema camera can be purchased for just about under $500. However, finding one of these cameras can be a potential challenge due to the discontinuation of this product in late 2015. There are unofficial rumors about how Blackmagic Design decided to discontinue the camera to avoid a potential lawsuit. They may have been unaware of the time when releasing this camera containing the codec Apple ProRes HQ. And the patent was already owned by another popular cinema camera company that you probably know, Red. If you find yourself in the research phase attempting to learn as much as you can about this camera, stick around and watching through to the end of this video to find out what I'd do if I found one of these cameras for sale. Here's a quick overview of our conversation for today before we get started. Ergonomics and functionality. This camera meets the pocket size dimensions of 128 millimeters by 38 millimeters by 66 millimeters. That means if you are the type of video creator who wants a pocket size cinema camera, you can carry this in most of your pockets or hiking backpack. Now, the primary reason most content creators will begin to consider purchasing this cinema camera is due to its size. You can avoid long-term back pain because carrying a heavy bag, as you probably already know, with lenses in it, by switching all of that with this pocket size cinema camera, which only weighs 0.35 kilograms, you're definitely going to save your back for sure. Technical specifications. The Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera has a micro four thirds sensor, which makes this camera convenient for any travel filmmaker who is used to shooting with Fuji or Panasonic sensors. The Pocket Cinema Camera has a 16 millimeter digital film sensor that is measured to be 12.48 millimeters by 7.02 millimeters. The native base ISO or ASA is 800. This setting will give you the best dynamic range performance out of this camera. With a camera so small, learning how to maximize its potential is the most important piece of advice. Learn composition, lighting, and more. The highest frame rate this cinema camera offers is 30 frames per second. Now, Blackmagic was aiming to provide 23.98 frames per second and even 24 frames per second exactly to filmmakers. If you did already know, 24 frames per second is the best frame rate to film at because it's the frame rate that offers the most natural motion blur. Most of us pick 23.98 though. One of my personal favorite additions is the 12-bit raw capabilities. This allows for maximum color accuracy and an astonishing amount of flexibility in post-production. As a professional colorist, having a high bit rate of depth will allow me to achieve a cinematic color grade without breaking the image. I know you're going to love this feature too. The 13 stops of dynamic range are quite impressive. A high dynamic range aims to offer a smoother and gentler, more natural highlight roll off. Another great feature of the raw capabilities is that you can change your gamma in post-production. With the most updated film generation 4, Color Science, this is a huge win for any Blackmagic users. This feature will allow you to maximize your camera when working in DaVinci Resolve. Finally, the controversial Apple ProRes 422 HQ. This codec is an industry standard and most films are edited in Apple ProRes 422 HQ. Now this was a smart move for them to add into the camera. However, at the time, they may not have realized that the patent was already owned by RED, another great cinema camera company. When shooting with this codec, instead of another film codec, you can increase the speed of your post-production workflow by avoiding transcoding or creating proxies. Of course, this may not limit your flexibility to shift the image, but if you can get it right straight out of camera, then you're in good shape. 
limitations. Considering its limitations is where you will more than likely spend most of your time deciding whether this camera fits into your workflow. This camera had a specific consumer in mind. Someone who travels frequently, hikes often, and packs light. It is also important to consider that not everyone will see those factors as limitations. For me, most of them are great features. Let me explain. The most frequently listed limitations of this camera are battery life, limited SD card availability, no chargers included, no in-body stabilization, the max resolution is 1080p, it has a dim screen, and it's a micro four thirds sensor. Now, if any of these features are deal breakers for you, then you can stop watching this video right now. However, if you wish to learn how to fix these issues and improve the performance of this camera with some additional knowledge, Knowledge, stick around. And if you're enjoying this video so far, please click that like button or subscribe button to share this video with other like-minded friends and help grow the reach of this community. I would love it and I love you if you do it. I love you regardless, but let's keep going. Let's begin with the ENEL20 battery life. If you turn off your camera when you're not using it, you can save battery life. It sounds simple right? Well, if you only turn on your camera to get the perfect shot, you can last an entire day on just one battery. I've done it. Now, when I travel with the intention on filming, if I don't see the perfect lighting conditions for whatever I'm creating, I won't even break out the camera. If I just choose to shoot random stuff, then I'm missing the point of filmmaking completely. Filmmaking is about good storytelling, good lighting, concise composition, motivated movement. Filmmaking is not about shooting random stuff, color grading it, and calling it cinematic, and then posting it on YouTube. At the end of the day, do what makes you happy, okay? For me, filmmaking is a tool that provides for my family because I'm good at it. That does not mean I want to spend all of my time sifting through hours of footage, grading and piecing together some random shots in hope of creating something special. I'd rather be prepared and certain of getting a shot that inspires people. Now there's a long way of saying I can often conserve my battery life by only shooting when the moment is ripe for filming. Next up, the SD card limited availability. Because this is old tech and the SD cards made today have larger capacities and have progressed further, many are not compatible. However, there are two to three companies that still have stock of really affordable SD card options that do work with the Pocket Cinema camera and you can find them in the link in the description. This topic is just more understanding your options for media capture, not as much as a limitation. Next up is battery chargers though. If you're a Nikon shooter, there is a chance that you already have the right charger because the camera takes an EN-EL20 battery. The biggest reason not to purchase this camera is that the Pocket Cinema camera does not contain in-body stabilization. For a camera so small, this is a problem, even for me. That limits handheld capabilities, and for someone who enjoys shooting handheld, that's often why I'll choose to pull out my Canon R6 in a pinch, because it has in-body stabilization. However, as I said before, if you can plan out your shots and compose a shot with a gimbal, tripod, and even add some weight with a cage, then your problem is solved. That's why I still recommend this pocket-sized powerhouse. The next limitation is actually quite easy to solve when using DaVinci Resolve. This camera only shoots 1080p. Now, if if you didn't just leave after hearing that, let me show you how to turn your 1080 footage into sharp 4K footage in just a few seconds. Open DaVinci Resolve, import your media, right click on all your media, right click clip attributes, scroll down to super scale, change the settings to two times, medium sharp, no noise reduction, and press save. You now have 4K footage problem solved. If you want to learn more about Resolve, you can pick up my masterclass by clicking the link in the description. Now, the screen on the back of the camera sucks. It flat out sucks. End of story. There's really no elaborating on this feature. It's just old tech and it's going to perform just as that. I strongly suggest leveraging the exposure zebra feature and sticking to it. And any chance possible, expose to the right without overexposing. Our last limitation is the micro four thirds sensor. A sensor that's so small means that 
that it has pretty bad low light performance and that is currently not up to industry standards. So if you plan to shoot in the dark, make sure you have at least enough light in your shot because without it, you're wasting your time trying to capture an underexposed dark image. There will be no fixing it in post. Our next conversation, accessories. Now for the good stuff, a camera cage, a polarizer, a ProMist diffusion filter will really be the only recommendations I have for this camera to keep things minimal and light. The camera cage adds weight, which will be important to help better stabilize your footage. The polarizer is great to keep your shutter low. When shooting outside, this will be a lifesaver. You can keep those skies and make them appear blue and those greens vivid and full of life. And lastly, you can remove all reflections from water and from windows. That's why I prefer a polarizer versus ND filters. Finally, a Tiffin Pro Mist filter, a diffusion filter that blooms the highlights and gives your footage a nice film glow. So lastly, learning opportunities. If you want to add more to your camera, like a top handle, battery pack, a microphone, a battery mount, you can very easily do that. However, if this is your intention, you're completely missing the point for who this camera is for. Remember, this camera was made for a minimalist travel filmmaker who understands lighting, who understands composition and motivation movement. Somebody who already understands that good storytelling is the most important reason to film in the first place. Finally, if you want a taste of the cinema world and you're on a budget and just starting off in the industry, this pocket size cinema camera can help you form good shooting habits. Habits like knowing when to pull out your camera, when to hit the record button, how to plan a shoot, how to tell a story, how to use lights and composition, and how to manipulate an image in post-production. If you want to learn more about how I generate six figures each year as a video creator, click the link in the description to sign up and get notified for when the course is released. In this video production masterclass, I teach all of my well-guarded secrets of how I went from knowing absolutely nothing about a camera to generating $100,000 in just six months by using an iPhone, <laughs> an iPhone. Anyways, I'm a dad now, and that baby is calling for a diaper change. So until next time, stay motivated until I see you in the next one. <laughs>